Hello, my name is Jay and welcome to the PBJ series of channels. This is the Projects by Jay channel. This video is a how-to on making this wooden compass. Part of this video includes the use of epoxy resin as part of the build. I ended up doing three pours of this resin and the first pour was so cloudy I could not see through it. The second pour, the resin got under the wood and lifted it off the bottom on one side of the form causing a very uneven pour. This means I made this compass three times. This video was referenced in a how not to video that I made when I was attempting to fill a knot hole in this cherry wood shelf. If you are watching this on YouTube, there should be a link to that video up there somewhere. If you came here from that cherry shelf video looking for the epoxy part, that is actually located in part two of this video. If you like what I'm doing, please smash the like button, click the subscribe button, and share these videos. Don't forget to click the notification bell icon so you can get notified whenever I upload fresh content. And please leave a comment about what you liked or didn't like, just be respectful. Safety. When you are working with tools, make sure you read and understand all the instructions and directions that come with your tools, powered or otherwise. Better to be safe than hurt. And always wear proper PPE, whether that is dust protection, hearing protection, eye protection in the shop, and always have a cell phone with you so you can call and summon aid if you need to. At this time, I have no sponsors or endorsements. When that happens, I will let my viewers know by updating any posted videos if somehow they get sponsorship. And for anyone watching this that is looking for someone to sponsor, I am open to discussing sponsorships with any company that treats customers fairly, with respect and dignity, and that makes sense on this platform. Lastly, enjoy. Life is supposed to be fun, and as I tell my family, never underestimate the importance of happiness in your life. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy what you see. My wife has a couple of projects she would like me to do. One of them she would like me to add a paduk. This is a wooden compass. She wants this made out of paduk and some inlay, which I have some veneer which I'm going to use for the inlay. First thing I do whenever I use my mitre saw is I take my square and I, I use it to make sure that my saw is square. So I'm going to rough cut my paduk. Uh, this piece is a little bit over five inches in width, so I'm going to square off one end. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and choose um, this end down here because it's the most colorful. But I'm going to square it off and then I'm going to cut a piece that's five uh, inches so I have a nice square. begin with, I have my base. I started by making an X using the southwest, northeast, in between points, not the, the northeast, south, and west. Drew a line across those points. I matched it carefully with the X I drew on the compass. I folded it in place and I taped it down on the back. Then I put a couple of pieces of tape lining up with the edge on the back. You can see right there how I have it right along the edge. And that's going to help guide when I put the template back on because I don't want to spray the adhesive onto the paduk. It'll make it, it it'll just be one more thing I have to get off. So now I'm going to take this and I have my other cutout pieces and I'm going to step outside because I don't want to spray this in the garage and I'm just going to kind of dump, dump like that with it and then after I'm done I'm going to turn the can upside down and I'm going to spray until it runs just air so I don't get adhesive clogging up the valve. 
The spray adhesive I'm using is HDX. I don't know if this is better or worse or what than any others. It just was available. I'm not getting sponsored, but it does work. After this, I've sprayed the back of my pieces uh, for probably a second each. Again, I just, just like that. And I'm going to let the adhesive dry for a couple of minutes. I do not want this adhesive to be super wet straight out of the can because if it is, it is going to stick to whatever I apply it to like nobody's business. I want it to stick, but I also want it to be able to peel off. If you let the adhesive dry thoroughly, when you go to peel it off, you'll find that it's more almost like a, a label that will peel off easily as opposed to something that's been glued in place. So this is probably dried sufficiently. I'm going to line it up with these things on the back. And this is the only one that actually needs to be lined up precisely because the other ones are going to just be if they're not they're going to be cut and then they're going to be light, laid down on top of this and that's when their positioning will be determined so but this one here, I want this to be in place properly. So that's good. Now I'm going to take this one. I'm going to take these inside and use my X-Acto knife. And I'll, I'll show you a little bit about how I'm cutting out this, these two pieces, which are veneer. So I'm working on the rose compass and I've got one part cut out and I did want to get this done because I've not worked with veneer before. So now what I'm doing is I'm working on the darker part and let me see if I can get a little bit, a little bit closer. Okay. And so I'm taking my cutting edge and I'm first starting by making a real light, just like a score cut. And then I'm going to go back and make a couple more cuts to get to depth. So it looks kind of, I don't know if you're able to see this. I'm really trying to focus in directly on what I'm doing. So I do a couple light cuts. Only what I can safely manage to really control My wife just came in with our new puppy. So after I carefully try as best I can to follow the line with a light score, then I go back over it again a little harder. And you might actually even, there you go, you can hear some fibers every once in a while being cut. Those are probably what I'm going across the fiber. I'm sure when I'm going with the fiber, you're not hearing a thing. 
So at this point, I think this is probably getting a little bit boring, but let's see. You can s just see that I am getting some separation. There you go. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut the rest of that out. This is a just a brief update on attempt number like six of trying to cut these veneers for the rose wood rose compass. After several different attempts at cutting circles and, and donuts and little slivers I was getting nowhere. So what I did is I decided to put this in layers. And I'm going to start with the bottom and then outermost layer. So the bottom layer of course is this which is made out of paduk. Well, let's go to the top layer. The top layer, I'm going to get a little bit closer, are these little bitty triangles and this is made out of a small piece of burl. I, I don't know what type of burl it is but it helps reduce the, the grain structure. Underneath that is the full diamond which is a slightly lighter portion of the burl. Let me, so here's the piece of burl and one side was pale and the other side was slightly darker. So, or this, actually this just edge here which is maybe an inch and a half wide is slightly darker. So I made the larger portions out of uh, which are the diamonds out of this lighter burl and then the, the wedges which you can see are cut out out of the burl that's a little bit darker to kind of give it a secondary appearance. On my compass row so far that accounts for all the diamond air in the center. The next layer is going to be this layer here which is the medium dark the medium dark layer. Underneath that is going to be the dark layer and underneath that is going to be the light layer which is the outermost layer of the comp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start gluing this down. So at this point I now have the three discs attached. Let me see if you can see that. I can go ahead and take one of these clamps off here. So you can see I now have the three three layers and those have to sit for about 20 minutes minimum to really let the glue tack up and get sticky and hold. The next pieces I have to put on will be applied like this. So I'll be taking it with a pair of tweezers and putting it in place. So I really want that coat to dry. So at this point what I've done is I've layered my pieces of veneer. I tried cutting all the pieces to specific size. I wanted to do everything on one layer but I wasn't able to so what I did is I just stacked the layers on top of each other. The next thing I have to do is work on putting the north east, south, and west compass points and then I'm going to put an edge on all four sides, a temporary edge. I'm going to pour epoxy and then after the epoxy sets I'm going to remove the edge and at that point I'll decide whether I'm going to cut this round or just leave it square like this. The next step in the process is burning in the letters. So what I have done so far is I, I, I burned in the north. 
Unfortunately, the compass points are not true. However, they're close enough, and I do not believe that the person that I'm making this for is expecting it to be a true compass. They're looking for the aesthetics, which I'm hopefully hoping these will uh, meet his needs. So I, the way I'm doing this is I'm taking a piece of a ring that I previously made, which is right here, which turned out not to work. And I, I have tried to see how it goes, how it works to burn through the paper to the wood below. And actually that seems to be doing pretty dosh, gosh darn good. That seems to be doing pretty good burning it through the paper. So, I've already done a little bit here with the W. And with the E, I put a line, a line down. Let me get that in focus. There's the line. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm heating up the burning tip. I've switched to a smaller slot tip. So now I'm going to do the smaller parts on the W and the E. My burning tool is heated up. Now for the W. So that's the W. I'm not looking forward to the S. So now I'm going to carefully do the S. I've got my template in place. So there's my S. Wood burning is obviously not my forte, but perhaps I will get better over time. My next step will be to take some high gloss polyurethane and seal everything. Then I'll put the sides on then I'll pour the epoxy. I've hand sanded this, the sides, the back, the front, not the design, but this area here, up to 220. Now I'm gonna go ahead and apply some water-based gloss polyurethane. I have already got my brushes. I'm gonna use these applicator brushes. Got a stir stick. And I got my mask, which I will put on as soon as I open up the can here. And again, with polyurethane, there are the two types. There's the brush on, and there is the wipe on. With the wipe on, you shake it. With the brush on, you do not. You stir it, so I'll be stirring this up. I'm really curious to see how this wood pops with the application of the polyurethane. So, here goes nothing and everything. And I'm going to go over it a couple of times so I can get, make sure I don't do not have any excess causing puddles and therefore kind of like the these nasty looking areas where the polyurethane might bind up. This part here I do want to get underneath the points gently. Because I want that raised effect, that 3D effect. Here and here, it looks like the glue is actually blocking the polyurethane from getting to the wood. So I'm going to see if I can take a small thin chisel and chisel out that glue carefully. So I'm going to get my chisel real quick. Okay, so I got rid of those excess blotches of glue.